What's up, divas? And what's up, divas? It's your girl, April. So you guys already know what time it is. It is Real Talk Wednesday, y'all. Real Talk Hump Day. We in the middle of the week, which is an amazing thing, especially for those of you who work Monday through Friday. If you don't work Monday through Friday and you work like Monday through Sunday, then this ain't hump day for y'all. But you know what? We still here. We still here. So before y'all even be like, okay, girl, why do you keep wearing your hair like this? Okay, so first of all, I'm going to explain a couple things to you before you guys, we get into this real talk because I always like to keep you posted, updated on the tea with me, okay? So for one, I'm not really over the whole wig thing and glamorous look. However, let me tell y'all something. It seems like it has not cooled down out here in Arizona and I'm really not into being hot like that anymore and I'm not like it's not like I'm over the whole wig thing because I love me some wigs don't get it twisted but I just feel like this I want to be comfortable I don't want to feel like I have to look glamorous all the time and made up and my hair dazzling in layers I really don't feel like I have to go through this all the time and I really don't want to um, and as much as I want to and don't want to, I just feel like, you know what, for me right now, because of the things that I'm going through in life and just not feeling too well, this is like a convenient style for me. And it's also very, very comfortable. You know what I mean? Um, I'm not sure if a lot of you guys know, but for my last couple of real talks, the last two I've done, I did state that I had to go to the doctors and I did state that. Okay. So like I was trying to explain that to you and then the doctor's office just called. So anyway, like this is a convenient style for me right now because of just the little things that I've going to going through like I stated in my last two real talks I was going to the doctor to be to see what was going on with my knee because I was in so much pain and also my feet have been swelling up every night for like the past few months I'm not really sure why but you know it is what it is so I did go to the doctor and I was x-rayed and they did diagnose me with minor arthritis in my knees however if that's minor then goddamn I don't want to feel what severe feels like because for the past few weeks I have been in a lot of pain and though when we're in a lot of pain you do take medications let me tell y'all I was prescribed some shit and the stuff that I was prescribed was not covered by my insurance it was over $1,000 per month for a 30-day supply so they wasn't trying to pay that which is like okay great can you tell me what at least it was nobody told me so I said well I'm just gonna try some Bayer aspirin because you see it on the commercials all the time you see these older people taking this Bayer for arthritis let me tell y'all something that did not work for me it was a horrible experience I started scratching from the Bayer I've never taken Bayer a day in my life because you just feel like I don't know if it's just me I felt like it was old people but aspirin so anyway I took the bear and um, it did not relieve any pain whatsoever from my knee I was still in excruciating pain on top of that I was scratching like crazy and I was getting really sick so um, come to find out I was kind of I had a reaction to the drug that's inside of the aspirin I'm not really sure how you pronounce it but it's called niacin oh, that's how I pronounce it so it, on top of that it didn't work and it also left me scratchy I did try something else um, which was prescribed to me, which was hydrocodone, um, aseptamine, or whatever you call it. Let me tell you, that made me really nauseous and sick and kind of sluggish all day, and it still did not relieve any of the pain. So finally, I read one of my YouTubers' um, comments on my video. She says she take a leave. So I said, I'm going to give this a try because I love a leaf. Um, not saying that I love it, but I do love it because I take this for my tooth pain and it be working. But I really didn't think it was going to work because it's only 220 milligrams versus Bayer and aspirin is 500 milligrams or 600. Let me tell you something. The night I took this, took two of these suckers. What? The pain was very slight. And then the next morning I woke up, I felt like I was new again. I had new knees, okay? Not even new knees, but I wasn't in pain. I was. I have been in so much pain for the past couple of weeks that I haven't been able to sleep. And I wake up in the middle of my sleep when I am able to sleep. And I have the worst excruciating pain in my legs. And it's throbbing. So I haven't been able to sleep. But thank you to my YouTuber who has told me about this. Because they use this. Amazing. So now... 
next things next I'm trying to figure out why my feet are swelling and I'm going to the vascular surgeon this Thursday on um, that's what just called me because I have horrible varicose veins and I did mention this in a few of my videos especially the videos about the things that I don't like about me my legs are really really bad meaning um, you see older people with bad varicose veins but they're much older I have them and I've grown with them I meaning I've been born with them like that over the years they've gotten worse and worse and they burst sometimes you see blood clots in my legs so um, the doctor thinks that because my feet are swelling and my feet on my legs feel so heavy and tired by the end of the day and even though I haven't done anything is because of the circulation so hopefully they can help me with that but I am going for that this Thursday because I'm tired of wearing flip-flops and I'm tired of my feet swelling and I'm so tired of my legs feeling like I've walked 50 miles when I ain't walk nowhere you know what I'm saying like you ever walk somewhere for like long periods of time and your legs are tired um well that's how I feel sometimes after like 10 minutes and sometimes I'm not going to say I'm depressed about it, but you know what? A lot of t people socialize um, um, arthritis for like the elderly. And that's what I mean. I'm one of those people that have associated with being really, really old to get arthritis. And when you at my age of 42 have been diagnosed with arthritis and you just be in severe pain, sometimes that shit really wears and tears on you because there have been days when I will stay in my room and not go downstairs because... I, I just can't make it you know what I'm saying my legs hurt and I don't really I don't like to feel like that you know what I'm saying like because I'm 42 years old I don't like to feel like I cannot get around and then I gotta ride in a scooter sometimes at the grocery store people looking at me like just because I look young don't get it twisted I do have ailments but I don't like to feel that way I don't like to feel like I'm a prisoner of my own body and that's a lot of the reasons why I started working out because I felt like you know what maybe if I work out and and get back in shape I won't feel these ailments let me tell you something it has not worked for me I still feel like a lot of pain and on top of that I feel like I not I don't feel like I haven't lost any fucking weight like and that is another thing that is really really bothering me like it I have not lost any weight and I haven't been to the gym in the past week because I have been in so much pain so after taking this and waking up on Sunday feeling a lot better from the leave, you know, I haven't been able to go to the gym on Monday because, of course, it was um, Halloween and stuff. So he's getting ready for that. Today is Tuesday because, you know, Tuesday I make these videos. And I'm not going to be able to go today because I have a lot of things that I need to take care of prior to that. But, you know, and also on top of that, my feet are swollen. Like, I have not woken up for the past few days without my feet looking like pigs wrapped in a blanket. Like, yeah, it's fucked up. Like, I'm just tired of feeling like this. So, I'm looking forward to Thursday because y'all bitches can take some of these veins out or correct them please do because a bitch like me needs to feel good i'm not about to be all old and decrepit at 42 feeling like oh i can't do anything because it ain't about to happen as funky as i am and as vibrant as my attitude is i'm not about to be held down because i don't feel good a bitch would be out there crawling on her knees then if i can't get around okay so that has been what's up with me and so lately I have just been wearing my hair like this because not because I'm depressed but because I just really feel comfortable like this right now I really don't feel like doing much of anything because of how I've been feeling and on top of that I'm just like really depressed about my weight like come on now I'm not fat I don't really care if I was fat I love me for who I am but I just want to be helped healthy and I want to lose my stomach area and like I don't want to feel defeated like you know what I'm saying like a lot of people will be like you're not big you're not big and yes I got on some shorts this is how I be looking for the videos but you know what I'm saying like me as a person I don't want to feel defeated like you know what I mean like I just want to be a little bit smaller and that's what I want and it's for nobody in particular but myself you know what I mean that's just how I feel like I don't want to be like these little skinny bitches that weigh like a hundred pounds because God knows I'm never going to get there and nor do I want to be there but I just want to lose a little weight for me because then I will be happy but until then I'm happy with myself and I'm going to lose the weight and work out just to be healthy and if I could lose some fucking weight in between that shit then please yes okay so other than that, that is how I've been feeling. And also, let me tell y'all something, okay? Because y'all know I will keep it real. I'm about to do a video on this. But I did put the video on private by 
he be hair aliexpress vendor they have some bomb they have some nice hair i'm not gonna say it's bombass.com but it was some nice hair and here's the thing um i work from home i do videos i make wigs that's how i earn my living you know what i'm saying and i don't do shit for free all the time but i feel like this if you're a hair vendor you making money off of me you could pay me a little bit of coins to do your hair video and i'm sorry if you don't like the way i did it but here's the thing the video was five minutes and 46 seconds so you complained about it not being long enough how long do you want a motherfucking video to be okay and on top of that you complained about me not showing the hair in the beginning i showed the wig after it was made i really don't feel like it's a need to always show the hair prior because what is what before what you know what i'm saying it's hair it all looked the same you really can't tell what it looked like that it smells okay listen so anyway they offered me an extra hundred dollars to get the video done much earlier than sooner and i was like okay because i already had recorded it and stuff like that but i didn't edit it because each person has their own turn but if you're going to offer me extra then i'm going to go ahead and proceed because this is what i do for a living well, obviously they didn't like it because it was 5 minutes and 46 seconds. They complained about that. They complained about the fact that um, I didn't showcase the hair in the beginning. And they also complained about the fact that it was only 5 minutes and 46 seconds. And I said it was Brazilian when it was really Peruvian. I'm sorry, bitches, but if you put motherfucking Brazilian on a package, then that's what the fuck I'm going off of, okay? So she wanted the video to be longer. I said, I'm sorry, but I'm not going to take the video down and make it any longer because I think think that five minutes and 46 seconds is long enough second of all i'm not going to re-record it because the hair is already made there's no way i can showcase hair that is already made but yeah just pay me my coins did this bitch tell me you're gonna do as i say for the next video review i said listen let me tell you something i don't know who you think you're talking to but you're not about to talk to me like this these are my videos and i'm sorry you didn't like my honest opinion about your hair but um yeah you're gonna pay me or the video is going to be on private and you're going to get backlash so what did they do they ignore my emails for payment and everything else like that didn't pay me so i put the video on private so these motherfuckers you want to steal from me because that's what i feel like you did you just stole from me all right so what your hair was limp at the ends and i said that that's just what the fuck i do i give honest reviews and if you can't handle it then motherfuckers don't contact me for a review however you ain't about to steal my motherfucking coins for a review and just be mad because it's over it's only five minutes and 46 seconds i'm sorry but like i told them my attention span for videos don't be that long i don't really want to watch no videos or no hair review for long periods of time so i don't think anybody else wants to but yes he be here on aliexpress all right but other than that let's get on to this because i'll do a whole video about that um but other than that let's get on to this um real talk because i think i've taken up more than enough of you guys' time and yeah let's just get on to that Oh, but if you want a video about yourself, you can always send me an email to muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com. And you can also put in the subject line, Real Talk. There's going to be two videos this week because it is still early in the day. You guys already know I got somewhere to go. Okay, so... Hello, April. I go by Lacey and I need your wisdom on my situation. I am 26, single, no kids, and living in Missouri. I've been dealing with this guy for almost three years with no title. Basically, a situationship. But, okay. About a year ago and a half, about a year and a half ago, he told me that he still wanted to make it work with the mother of his child. And he did not want me in his bullshit. I was extremely hurt because, for one, I asked questions up front regarding the situation, and of course I got the typical answer that he was done and would never hurt me. After time went on, I eventually seen them out in public and confronted him about it. He didn't really directly address it, so I decided that I was done, and I stopped contacting him and blocked his number. Over four months, he would still call, sometimes even left messages. While I never responded, I was so confused because I did not know if I was making the right decision and I still felt feel this way now. I go back and forth with how I feel. I know he knows it's too 
I know he knows it too. So he does not believe I will end things. I really like him, love him, even, even, but I feel so confused. I prayed, cried, cut him off, asked friends, all of the above, and still can't find a solution. I have other guys that are interested, but they don't make me feel the same way. I'm attracted to him because he takes care of his children, and he is a real man with an edgy side that I can respect. Feel secure and trust to be the head of the house. I have to mention the sex is amazing, but it makes it known, but he makes it known that this is not the only reason he sticks around. He said he has feelings for me, but I just don't think this is good for me. The longer I stay, the harder it will be to leave. At this point, I don't know if I should follow my heart or my head. Thanks for your time, sweetheart. So basically, Lacey has been seeing this deadbeat for three years. He then told her the okie doke, um, how he's done with his baby mama. He's just going to basically take care of the kids and he don't want to hurt her. But come to find out, she didn't confront him because she's seen him in public together and he wants to try to make it work with his baby mother because basically he loves his baby mother still and he don't want her involved in his bullshit. So Lacey then in return, cuts him off, doesn't speak to him, but she's still having mixed feelings because she loves him, but she's so attracted to the way he takes care of his kids and she feels like he has this edgy side so what should she basically do what you should do Lacey is get your life because okay that's cool you attracted to a nigga because he take care of his kids there are a whole lot of other motherfuckers out there that take care of their kids that you could be attracted to expect especially the ones that ain't gonna disrespect you I feel like he disrespected you by leading you the fuck on who the fuck wants to be led on niggas always say men always say I'm done I don't want to hurt you do you know how many times I have heard that from a man that I don't want to hurt you and then I got swept off my feet and melted like butter got all creamy and way on the inside because he the fucking said to me I don't want to hurt you because it made me feel some type of fucking way it made me feel like he really fucking cared okay and that's just their way around shit to get what the fuck they want and you know I got really hip to a lot of that shit like with men and I started feeding them the same bullshit that they fed us and I guess that's why some of my friends say I act like a boy because of the shit that I've done to men and have said to them but I'm sorry if you spoon feed me nigga I'm about to spoon feed Joe ass I'm gonna tell you what the fuck you think that you want to hear from me because you think you told me what the fuck you think I want to hear nah dude just be real and truthful about your shit now if a nigga got baby mama drama and they got kids and they want they tell you that they want to try to make it what they they tell you if a man tells you they want to try to make it work with their ex who they got kids with or in general they just want to make it work with their ex regardless if they got kids or not that is your red flag to leave them the fuck alone because obviously they still have feelings for this female because if they didn't they wouldn't come out their mouths and say that shit however they say shit like that but then they want to creep back to your dumb ass and then you allow them if a man tells me that I'm going to try to make it work with my family, my baby mama, or my ex, I'm going to let him make it work with them. Because obviously you're confused or you really don't know what the fuck you want. And also because April ain't about to be trapped up in no bullshit and feelings in her feelings because of some ex bitch and the shit that you want to do. Or let's see, sometimes they say shit like that because they make it seem like they want to really work things out with their ex. But they don't. But they feel like if they tell another woman that, that that other woman will be like, oh. Oh, well, I still want him. And if you feel that way after he's already done told you that he wants to make it work with his ex, then you a dumbass. All right? Because I'm sorry, I'm not about to be nobody's back burner or a second fiddle to nobody. Okay? If he got a family, let him go to that family. Never be a home wrecker. All right? If he got kids with somebody else and he want to make that shit work, then encourage that motherfucker to go make that shit work. Because obviously, you ain't number one priority to him. Because if you were a bitch, he wouldn't have said he wanted to make that shit work. Now, of course, you all in your motherfucking feelings and you feel some type of way and the sex is amazing. But how about this? Sex can be amazing, but with anybody. Okay? You know that song that Rihanna just put out. Sex with with me okay yes listen to that shit because that nigga ain't the only motherfucker in the world with a dick and I promise you this he ain't the only nigga in this world with a big dick or who could hump and fuck real good because trust and believe I have met several of those motherfuckers in my lifetime one being my ex-husband and that is one reason why I stuck around for so long because that nigga could put it down in the bedroom and a bitch like me don't want to leave that shit however the next motherfucker was that dude out here in Arizona that was originally from New 
New Jersey, who I would still fuck around with from time to time. Now, if you want to talk about putting it down in the bed, he reminded me so much of my ex-husband. And I think that was the main reason why I was attracted to him. Though he was a dog, not a dog to me. But I know he was fucking with other bitches, okay? But the sex was just amazing, like Rihanna would say. And that's what got me stuck, and I fell in love with his punk ass. However, I came to reality's sake and was like, bitch, he keep fucking texting you and sending you dick pictures. And I'm sorry, but as big as your dick might be, I really don't want to see it across my fucking phone screen because my daughter plays with my phone. And on top of that, I find it an insult and disrespect that you can't just text me on a regular basis and say, hey, girl, what's up? I miss you. How you doing? But you want to text me a screenshot of your dick? Let me tell you something. If I really wanted to see a big dick, I can put on Pornhub and jack off to that shit and see an amazing ass dick and not even have to be involved with you and go on and carry on with the rest of my day and life, okay? Now, yes, yeah, sex is amazing, but how long does it last? And I'm sorry, but sex might be amazing, but I'm not about to put up with 5, 10, 15 minutes, maybe even 30 minutes to an hour of great full fucking and then but put up with some bullshit for the rest of the motherfucking day or days or months in my lifetime. I'm sorry, but that means that the sex ain't that amazing because if you can give me an hour worth of bullshit, which might be amazing, and some motherfuckers can't hang for an hour, so let's just put it, I'm just going to round it off for an hour, okay? But I'm pretty sure that motherfuckers out there can't hang for that long but it is what it is so i'm just gonna say okay so you gave me an hour worth of some good dick the sex ain't that amazing if he gave you an hour's worth of good dick but a whole headache worth of a, a bullshit there's nothing amazing about that shit, okay? He just knows how to fucking use his fucking instrument as a tool and get what the fuck he wants. Y'all bitches really need to realize, yeah, dick is good and it might be amazing. And pussy is good too for those of you who like the opposite sex or the same sex. However, I'm sorry, but ain't no sex amazing if you're going to give it to me good for a little while. And then for the rest of the motherfucking day or days or weeks, you breaking my motherfucking heart. I'm sorry, but that's why I got this and this and a glass dildo in my motherfucking closet that I can use and ain't got to worry about nobody fucking pissing me the fuck off and I also got this which means it's the internet and I could watch porn all day long for free and fantasize about some good dick and play with my motherfucking self and then when I'm done go about my business and not have to worry about where this nigga at because he fucked me last night and I ain't heard from him all motherfucking day and now I'm sitting here crying I'm sorry but if a nigga got a girl or a man got a bitch and he's telling you that he wants to make it work let let him go and carry on with your life because as long as you allow him to stagnate you, you ain't going to go on and move on and forward in your life. Therefore, there is a man out there for everybody. And yes, best believe a bitch like me isn't waiting for one. I might be 40 fucking two. However, I'm not stupid and I am a little bit picky. I am not about to lower my standards for no dick that's amazing for a little bit of time. If I can't have the amazingness all year and day round then you know what poof be gone bye felicia because i got other shit to take care of in life okay i'd rather be alone to be stressed out about a motherfucker okay regardless if i love women or i love men okay or both i'm not about to let nobody's character fucking stress me the fuck out so lacy it's time you wake the fuck up and realize that you are just strong over on the dick game. And I guarantee you, Bobby next door or Tom around the corner got a better dick game than him. But however, you just don't allow it and you don't give it a chance. And as long as you stagnant and strung up on this motherfucker, he is just going to string you along like you Geppetto and Pinocchio in a fucking Disney story. Get over it and move the fuck on. It isn't what your heart wants, but listen to your head sometimes. Because if you was listening to your heart, then you realize that that shit's been broken enough and you are just sitting back waiting for something to happen that ain't about to happen. Okay? So there's my opinion and my thoughts on that. If y'all bitches want to keep fantasizing about a nigga because he got a good dick game, trust and believe he know that shit already. You don't have to tell him that. Best believe he know that shit because he giving it to the next bitch the next motherfucking night. That's why you haven't heard from him all day. Because y'all constantly telling him that his dick game is good and it's amazing. I'm sorry, but yes, I've dealt with amazing dick game long enough. And I'm not going to deal with amazing dick game in a headache. Bottom line. So let Lacey know your thoughts on that one. <laughs> 
Okay, so the last real talk of the day. And I know you guys are like, what? But yes, yes, I got shit to do. Hi, April. My name is, um, well, she gave me her real name. We're going to just call her Drea. My name is Drea. I love your channel so much. You inspire me to be myself and not care about what other people think. I'm 19 years old and have been in a relationship with my boyfriend for almost a year. I lost my virginity to him about six months into the relationship. I've noticed a change. We started arguing more, see each other less, and I started getting less attracted to him. He works, but he has no real life goals. He's dropped out of college. He doesn't plan on going back. All he does is smoke weed, go to work, and chill with his friends almost every Every night. I'm in college and working part time, but recently I've been getting the feeling that he's holding me back from living my life. Ever since we've been together, I've gained 37 pounds, lost all my friends, and don't even have a social life anymore. I'm adventurous and he's really lazy. He tells me he loves me, but he's always pressuring me for sex. I always tell him it, it makes me uncomfortable because we had a pregnancy scare a while back. But then two days later, he does the same thing and pressure me again. He's stressing me out so much to the point where I get chest pain and cry myself to sleep. I tried breaking up with him before and he started crying and said he can't lose me. All his friends, all of his friends tell me I can't leave him because he really loves me and he'll be depressed and, har and harm himself if I ever left him. I honestly don't know what to do. I have no one to talk to. My friends haven't spoken to me in months and my mom, my mom doesn't even know I'm not a virgin anymore. I would be so grateful to hear your response to my story. Wow. So, Drea is 19 years old, been with her boyfriend for almost a year, lost her virginity into within six months into the relationship, and she's noticed the change. She's not attracted to him anymore, her boyfriend. She's not attracted to him um, anymore. He's, um, they argue a lot. He smokes weed all the time, likes to hang out with his friends. He doesn't have no real life goals. Okay, she goes to college. She works part-time. She's trying to make something to her life. She's lost. She's gained 37 pounds, and she's crying herself to sleep at night. Okay, Drea, the reason why you're not attracted to the motherfucker anymore is because he's a loser. Bottom line, you know, loser, put it like this. I'm sorry to say that. I don't really like to judge people, but a certain time, after a while, shit starts, like, making you numb in a relationship you know how you you've been in love with somebody you love them you feel like you're never gonna leave them it's gonna be you guys forever you'll never fall out of love with them and then they start doing little things that start irritating you and you kind of look past it but then they just continuously do these little irritating things and it doesn't hurt you it doesn't hurt your feelings as much anymore but it starts to irritate you and it starts to aggravate you and then you find them less attractive I'm telling you this on experience because I've had an ex-husband you know, his drinking started irritating me at first, and I would cry about it and try to get him to stop. And then over time, it's like, you know what, motherfucker, that's all you're going to do. Um, I'm not really in love with you anymore. I'm starting to get annoyed with you. I'm feeling like you're just going to be an alcoholic for the rest of your life, in and out of jail. You really have no life goals. And then I stopped getting attracted to him. I didn't want to have sex with him anymore. And I never, ever felt in my life that I would feel like this about this one particular person because I married him and I felt like we were going to be together forever and I would never have any ill manner feelings towards him. But though he's changed, I've changed. And your ill feelings and your negative has made me more positive and it's made me look at you in a different way and yeah Drea you're going to school and you're trying to better yourself and all he's doing is going backwards and we start to look at people after a while we don't really see who they really are in the beginning of a relationship because of course they don't allow us to see that why the fuck would he allow you to see that he's a weed head and he don't have no goals in life because if that was the case you never would have been attracted to him so he puts on this persona and this illusion like he's somebody really really positive and you fall in love with that and then over time he lets himself lose he gets comfortable and he becomes who he really is let me tell you something don't listen to his friends talking about you can't leave him he's going to harm himself if he was really going to fucking harm himself he would have done that i have heard that many times in relationships if you leave me i'm gonna kill myself i'm just gonna kill myself remember i have been married and i've been with somebody for 17 18 years and they felt like they were going to kill themselves if i wasn't with them but if somebody's telling you that they're going to kill themselves if you're not with them nine times out of ten they're really not going to kill themselves but if you are still skeptical then call the hotline for suicide there's lots of them and if you feel that way about the person report them 
However, let me tell you something. If a motherfucker really wants to harm themselves, you and nobody else can stop them, okay? And then nine times out of ten, don't have anything to do with you. Don't let anybody put the pressure on you that you have to be with them because if you don't, they're going to kill themselves because don't allow that. They're not. They just want you to feel the guilt and the pressure and to stay with them. I'm sorry because there are a lot of motherfuckers out there that done that and do that and trust and believe I have been with a couple of them. And I feel flattered that you want to kill yourself over me. However, I know your bitch ass ain't about to fucking kill yourself over me. Let's be real, okay? Now, yeah, you're not attracted to him because he's a loser and he ain't doing anything real in life. And I get it. Niggas don't sometimes want to live up to their goals and bitches don't neither. But that's not supposed to hold us back. You have a career. You have things to do in life. You have gained 37 pounds. Let me tell you something, bitch, okay? Ever since I broke up with that fucking little dick motherfucker back in May and sent him packing with the police, I have gained weight. And trust and believe it ain't because I miss him. It's because I'm happy and I let myself go. You know what I'm saying? And I'm feeling myself in my skin and I'm just comfortable. You, on the other hand, are opposite because he's lazy and he don't want to do anything. But this is the thing. If you sit around and you wait for him to do something, bitch, you're going to end up looking like Jabba the motherfucking hut from Jedi. So let's not let ourselves go that much. You and I both know that we can go ahead out there and work on ourselves and our self-esteem. I'm never going to again in life allow any man to drag me down and depress me. And I don't think at 19 years old that you need to be at home crying yourself to sleep over no fucking loser ass boy. You have too much at state ahead of you to lose. Therefore, I myself personally am going to advise you to let him go and leave him alone. And if he's going to harm himself, then you know what? That's something that he has to live with, not you. But what you need to do is not worry so much about losing your virginity because that's what you did and it happens to the best of us and sometimes we lose our virginity to an asshole you know what get over it because it's a part of life but what I would say is you don't want to lose yourself to an asshole so with that I mean get yourself together pull it together get back out there and exercise do your schoolwork start worrying about him and get your friends back never let your friends go for no man because there are plenty fish in the sea but real friends come um, not too often, okay? You know the saying, they come a dime a dozen, meaning men, but a real friend is there to the end. And though they may not have been your real friends because they're not stuck around, however, you may have played a part in this. So what I was, you, would do if I were you is I would reach out to them and let them know, hey, you know, I have made some mistakes. We all are blind to love sometimes, but I have changed my ways. You ain't got to suck or kiss nobody ass. But the first things first you got to do is make right with yourself, okay? Make right with yourself. You're a young girl. You're still a teenager. You got a whole lot to live for. So stop worrying about dick and who the fuck he is and carry on. Because I'd be damned if a nigga about to press me for some pussy. He ain't about to be like that. Let him go. He's not worth your time. If he ain't got no life goals and he want to smoke weed all day, then he got to go. I like to smoke weed too, but not all day. You know what I'm saying? That's my nightly routine. But I ain't a weed head, but I'm sorry. I'm not about to smoke weed all day and not do nothing with myself. That's just... That's just... You just asking for trouble. So those are your reasons why you're not attracted to him. I wouldn't be attracted to his ass neither. So on that note, let Drea know what you guys would do and your thoughts on their situations. And your girl's going to go. I'm going to go. I'm going to go pay my car insurance. I'm going to go get my mumsy from school. And I hope you guys have a fabulous day. Make sure that you send me some love and leave some comments. And I will see you guys on a soon-to-come video. Make sure you check out my other video for the day. I don't really know if I have one. But I'll put one up, hopefully. You know, I try to do two videos on Wednesday. One beauty related for those of you who don't like real talk. Because I got a potty fucking mouth. And those of you who like both. So, I will post the information below of what video I decide to post up today. As well as real talk. So, on that note, I love you guys. Make sure you stay diva and divalicious as always. And I'll see you guys on a soon-to-come video. Bye.